Hi and welcome to a new video. In this video I wanted just to quickly go through the a new feature that you might have seen. So when you've been downloading the Asus app for your Android or um, Apple device uh, you would have seen that there is actually a new feature called MLO uh, that's actually coming up. Um, so that's saying around uh, if you have a Wi-Fi 7 uh, router um, or router um, then basically this feature has now been added. It's been in a few uh, of the updates and I think they've been slowly trying to improve it. So when it first came out, the Wi-Fi 7 uh, routers didn't actually have this uh, feature and now they've implemented it so uh, you can switch it on and actually have a look. So you can see it's in the app as well but um, as usual I'm going to use the web browser because I find it a bit more um, user friendly and it's easier and it has a, a few more options where it gives it explanations especially with around new features it always uh, helps to have that more information to understand what it is so what you do is you log into your router as usual go to wireless and then uh, you go to you'll see this tab up here called MLO um, you click on that and that, that will then take you to this uh, menu here where you can see that you have a profile list an option to add a network so you can see here you can name the network but then also give more options and you can see here you can have the options here if you like uh, as well um, if you want more advanced uh, customization you have the get start and then also you have the wireless setting uh, that will basically take you to the the wireless settings uh, in the uh, actual options here under advanced settings and then you have the actual on button here so this will actually switch on the feature as well again you do have the help function here so if you click on this this will give you a little bit more information so as we said this is about MLO so actually it's multi-link operation so basically uh, the gist of it is a, your device your Wi-Fi 7 device can connect to all three bands at the same time um, and that of course gives you a lot more better bandwidth um, and then also uh, through uh, latency as well so it gives you a low uh, latency as well when connecting to uh, high demand devices so you're talking like 4k video streaming and even 8k if you're super lucky um, and then virtual reality that seems to um, be coming through now and also with all these headsets like quest and the uh, apple one as well um, that you can use and of course they use a lot of bandwidth there as well so having this new technology will actually help in the future as well so again, as I said here, basically it allows devices to connect to multiple frequencies. So it means it's what's well, talk about the frequencies is talk about the bands here. So it's talking about the 2.4, the 5 and the 6 gigahertz uh, bands. So you basically be able to connect to all of them. So your mobile device, tablet, computer, laptop or, uh, with Wi-Fi 7. And as long as it supports MLO, um, then you'll be able to connect to all of those devices simultaneously. So all those channels so you can use all that bandwidth. So basically it means it is uh, bloody fast, to be honest, <laughs> if it connects with all three bands. And of course, it's clever enough to uh, swap between them as well. So as it says here, it boosts the data rates, reduces your latency and improves reliability, resulting faster and more stable Wi-Fi connections. Because again, as we know that the six gigahertz band and the five has got a less distance than the two. So of course, if you're close by the uh, actual router, you're gonna have all three of them. And as you go further away, the six might drop off and you only have the five and the two, but you'll still have that advantage where it can use both bands and things like that. So it's an excellent feature and I'm glad they've actually uh, started to introduce this. So if we just quickly go to the little uh, kind of technical uh, article that Asus has basically uh, and I'll put a link into the description for this so you can have a read through in more detail so basically it just goes through the Wi-Fi 7 history here where it was basically saying we had the uh, 802.11b so we had the 2.4 gigahertz band and of course even today we still have a majority of IoT devices doorbells cameras and things that are still connecting on the 2.4 gigahertz band for some reason and of course they probably use that because of distance most of these devices are sit outside your house so your Wi-Fi signal might not be as strong if you're using the 5 or even the 6 gigahertz band so you can see here the wireless protocol also adopted an approach of naming schemes so they changed from the 802.11 
N and then AC and AX and they made it much more straightforward and they did Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6, 6C and Wi-Fi 7 so of course that's much better. But the actual technical uh, name for the Wi-Fi 7 is 802.11.be um, so you might see those on some of the adapters as well um, so that just means the B uh, on, on the, after the 11 this means it's her Wi-Fi 7. It doesn't necessarily mean it supports this MLO feature, so you just need to make sure that if you're getting an adapter, um, that it actually does support this feature, because some of the firmware might be uh, pre, uh, before they actually finalize the actual draft um, blueprint of the actual uh, standard and everything else. So just be wary. So as it says here, it's basically Wi-Fi 7 is a huge leap um, from six, but then six and, between 6 and 6E, so as we know, 6E brought the 6 gigahertz band, so of course that brought a lot more bandwidth, but again, as we go up the bands, um, the distance is uh, shrinking down more and more, so of course it's, uh, it's going to uh, not go to go at the distance. So basically it's just saying here the difference between Wi-Fi 7 versus Wi-Fi 6. So you can see here where they basically just got a nice table here to explain what the technical uh, lettering is uh, numbering and then the maximum uh, data rates as you can see here in Wi-Fi 7 it jumps all the way to 46 uh, gigabits per second and you have 9.6 on the Wi-Fi 6e and Wi-Fi 6 again you're never going to achieve these unless you're in a kind of uh, laboratory uh, under extreme conditions that are perfect um, so take these with a pinch of salt but it just gives you that you know reassures that they are progressing in giant leaps basically and you can see the bands here so as we said Wi-Fi 6 was supported the 2.4 and the 5 Wi-Fi 6e supports the 2.4 5 and 6 and Wi-Fi 7 also supports the 2.4 5 and 6 same as Wi-Fi 6e but um, you'll see here the bandwidth and the maximum you can get is 160 with Wi-Fi 6 and 6e and you can go up to 320 so basically you're doubling it on Wi-Fi 7 so that bandwidth is doubled basically then you've got the modulation as well so you have 1024 and 4096 so basically we just need to know is it's jumped up hugely kind of thing so you've got the security so uh, both of them support the latest WPA3 so that's good to see that they've actually uh, implemented that as well. Again, it's down to the device if it supports it. They've updated the firmware. A lot of these uh, cheaper devices um, probably will stick with WPA2 and never get updates. So uh, just be wary of that. It's always good. Try and look. If you're going to buy a new product, try and see, make sure it supports WPA3 uh, for your security. You've got key features here as well, it's saying around the um, multi-user, multi-input, multi-output, and you've got the 8x8 and beam forming, so basically it just targets, it works out where your device is and just sends the information. And you've got the target wait time as well, so that was basically uh, trying to save your device's uh, battery uh, consumption as well. And you can see basically here they've just improved it and literally doubled up on everything to make it uh, as fast as uh, they're mentioning up here. Here you can see here it's quite good. I do like a little uh, good graph um, and uh, so it puts it into perspective. You can see here Wi-Fi 7, this is the bandwidth we were talking about. It's uh, basically lanes in the motorway so you can see here they've got rockets. Uh, so basically it's 320 megahertz so it's double uh, the bandwidth so you've got four lanes and then your 160 they're representing with two lanes here and then Wi-Fi 5 with one. Again, uh, take this with a pinch of salt. It all depends again with your uh, environment and all the uh, other routers that are or routers are around you and interference you've got and then the build of your house and everything else. So uh, in theory, sometimes there should be a big leap to go into Wi-Fi 7, but sometimes you might not depending on your, your lookout. So again, here they're saying around the new 320 megahertz channel and the six gigahertz band. Here, uh, visualizing the uh, QAM as we went through before the top table, so you can just see basically it can get more bits of data uh, through on the Wi-Fi um, as it transmits data packets and things like that. And then here it moves on to the MLO, uh, multi-link operation. So you can see here on Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, uh, you've got the device your mobile phone or your tablet or anything else 
it can only connect to the 5 or the 2.4 or the 6 at one time but with Wi-Fi 7 your mobile device um, or any device that supports Wi-Fi 7 specifically with MLO support um, will can connect to all of these channels all in one go um, so it's going to be very fast if it can connect again mobile phones and tablets will never probably see quad band connections like this most of the time it's going to be two by two um, it depends on the radio that's in there and the chipset so again um, just be wary that they're showing a mobile phone here but probably desktops and laptops will probably add to support all this uh, multiple uh, channels but uh, it'll be a cut down probably for the um, on the mobile devices so you can just go through more information as we've gone through already around the combining of the actual information and again there's more technical information as I said I'll put this description into uh, the link for this uh, page in there so you can go through in more detail to have a read through but basically it just tells you um, what the MLO is and that's what we want to um, we're more, most interested in for this feature to switch on in our Asus uh, router uh, that actually supports uh, Wi-Fi 7. So as you can see here, I've got the uh, this router here uh, is the BE98. Um, so this is the GTBE98. Um, and again, as we said, you go to advanced settings, wireless and MLO. You got the get started and you can put the switch on here. So what we're going to do now is move on to actually just going through these options here. So with uh, we'll start with uh, get start. So we'll just click on this. So you can see here, uh, upgrade your wireless network for optimal multi-link operation. Your existing wireless settings are incompatible with the MLO network. We'll insist in creating an MLO network that integrates with your main wireless settings and transition existing. Wi-Fi set up to the IoT, IoT network, so that's your Internet of Things. So basically they're talking about small devices like your plugs and everything else that connect to the network uh, to ensure compatibility with legacy devices. So basically they're just saying that the current settings I've got, they're going to have to update and change. So just be wary of this when you start doing this. Um, if you have customized your Wi-Fi settings, make sure you've just recorded them in like notes or something or uh, Google notes, any app that you've got, um, just write them down if you want to remember them or, you know, cause this is going to probably try and change them for you. So next we'll click on get start. So now it's going to go through. So it's going to assign unique names and SSIDs. So as we can see here, we've already got this here. So it's actually going to set up these kind of random Wi-Fi 7 network. So you can see here, it's going to set up this one here and this IoT device. So then all we do then, it says set identifier. We can click through here and you click on apply. Of course, this is what it's going to do now is probably combine all the networks as a, as a switch it on. So if you had separated out networks, just be aware if you are going to use this, your uh, network information will now be uh, set as the, it's done here. So you can see here you're going to have an IoT uh, device network is set up. So this is for your IoT devices. Again, if you've got any like Google Assistants or anything like that, um, Alexas and um, anything else. Sometimes putting them on a separate network and separating them out may cause an issue. Uh, so just be wary of that. And of course, this resets your everything in your settings. So just be wary again that this is going to disconnect. If you've got your bands all separated out like I have, this is going to combine them. Um, so you have to be wary of that um, because so if you've got any other devices connected to your 5G or 6G, it's not, it's going to disconnect them. So just be aware if you really want to switch this on or not. And again, to be honest, most people are not going to have a, wi a lot of Wi-Fi 7 devices, if any, right now. And also, especially, you might have a Wi-Fi 7 device, but it will not support the MLO function. So switching this on, if you've already separated your networks, then I wouldn't bother, to be honest with you, with this uh, option. But if you've got them already um, assigned under one network, then this is no change for you. This is just going to basically um, go through the process and set that network up. So we now we'll move on to after it says here, once the new SSID is uh, connected, go back to your router uh, for more advanced settings. 
So now we'll just move on to that and wait for the router to restart. So the router has now restarted and as, as you'll know, it's actually uh, switched on the Smart Connect uh, option now in Wi-Fi. So as we said before, uh, if you set up your uh, router already like that, where you can, you've only got one uh, network name or one SSID for all your bands, then you won't notice this any different and all your devices will be fine. But again, just be wary that when you do switch this on, this will combine all the networks under one network name. Um, so all the devices that were connected to your separate uh, five gigahertz bands and your six gigahertz bands will now be disconnected because there's only one network name. So instead of having four um, or three network names. So what you can do to get around this is that they do give you the option to add a network. So now you can come in here and add that other network names that you had before for your 5G, uh, five gigahertz band and then six gigahertz band or the uh, and the other five gigahertz band if you're lucky enough to have a quad uh, band and router. And you can put them all in here with the same uh, passwords. And then also you can come in here and switch on the settings. So if you're going to use this for your uh, actual network, like you want to actually set up a separate one, you're gonna want to have this as using the same network. You want it to access the uh, intranet and then you don't want it to limit any bandwidth because you just want it as a normal network or if you do, then you can switch this on. And again, with Wi-Fi scheduling, you can have this so it switches on and off this band. But of course I want this on all the time. So I just want it to reflect. You can't change on here, it just a 2.4 or 5 or 6 because it's still going to be using the Smart Connect feature where it combines with the bands. But I'll just have another network name on there. And then you can just name that network, put your password in that you used before. It will probably restart again. And you'll probably have to do this for your other bands. But then you'll see the actually underneath here, once you've created it under here, you'll have all your network names under here and all your devices for the 5G and 6G will be able to connect as well to those Wi-Fi. And this is where you'll be controlling your, basically your settings as well from here. You can go back into your normal Wi-Fi settings um, and uh, go through there, but just be wary now it's gonna be mostly controlled under here, uh, this option here where you've created these networks. So that's the workaround, as I said, um, you can create these so you can have an, uh, this feature switched on uh, again, it's just make sure is it worthwhile for you to switch this on? It might be a fact it looks very fancy, but will you take advantage of this? And don't forget, this is a new feature, so there might be issues with connecting compatibility of older devices and things like that. So just weigh it up. If you're, of course, if you've got the latest technology, you've got all these devices that can um, connect using the MLO, then that's fine. But if you don't, then I advise you leave this switched off. Even if you've got a few Wi-Fi 7 devices like I have, I've got the Wi-Fi 7 Intel adapter. Um, I've got that in my uh, com desktop computer. And then I've got the Pixel 8 as well. That's Wi-Fi 7. But um, on here, there's no point me actually connecting these right now to it um, and having this. But again, it's up to you. So this is just a new feature that they've left on here for you to switch on so that's why it's off by default because it does make things a little bit more uh, less compatible with older devices and a bit more um, customization and things you need to be aware of from your end as an end user again if you have any questions please make sure uh, to leave them into the comment section and i'll do my best to get back to you again thanks for watching and i hope you found this video useful and have a great day